Hello YouTube, it's Matt, the uh, gaming guy, and today I'm going to show you something else other than uh, gaming. Um, this is something that I do as a little hobby, and I haven't seen too many videos on how to make it. Uh, if you haven't already guessed, it is chainmail, the um, medieval sort of knights war battle. It's uh, early army before they had sort of plate stuff. It's uh, reasonably effective. Um, I make it just as a bit of a hobby, and um, also um, I'm going to be using it as a prop eventually. Because uh, in the future, on uh, R and R, which is the Rashers Random page, uh, if you didn't already know about it, um, we're going to do a Skyrim video where we're going to do a couple of um, different sketches that we've already thought up. We're just waiting for me to finish the. Uh, armor and uh, sort of get that ready and uh, we'll go out and film it and then it'll be on um, probably it'll probably be on in the summer of uh, 2012 um, but anyway I'm going to show you how to make some chainmail so first off what you need is you need one of these um, I used to have a contraption for it, but basically it's a piece of dowel, probably about a centimetre wide, um, and about a foot long. Um, I've I've added this to the end, which is a little thing that I can twist and sort of use that to uh, coil the wire, which I'll show you in a minute. You also need a pair of these, which are the um, wire cutters. Um, a pair of pliers and a pair of small, the small uh, pliers as well. Um, and also to make the chain melt, you need some of this, which is about one millimeter thick wire. I get mine from B and Q. It's around uh, three pounds per for fifty meters worth of wire, which is quite a bit, um, and that gives you about probably say around couple of thousand rings um, per lot so I'm going to go ahead and show you the um, coiling process so we find one of the ends like so um, unravel a little so that you can start when you've got probably about a couple of foot unraveled straighten it a bit that's what I like to do just make sure I get it Right, and it doesn't twist when I'm uh, working with it. And we go like this. There's also, with this dowel, I forgot to mention, there is a little hole around two mil, 1 mil to 2 mil wide. Um, and this allows me to put the wire through to lock it so that it doesn't start slipping about. Because I find that if you don't have one of these in, and then, oh, um, yeah, it starts slipping about and then it's really hard to twist and you get it all messy when you twist and you don't get even rings. So what you want to do after you've put the wire like that, you want to just bend it a little so that it doesn't pop through. So then it's roughly, it's like that. So just bend it across like that. And then you've got to... Uh, twist it. What I like to do is I like to leave a little gap about that wide so that uh, I don't catch my hand again on the um, on the point of what's being pushed through the gap because otherwise you can cut yourself because um, if you've already cut part of the wire it can become quite sharp and I've cut myself several times on it so just to stop the uh, hassle of having to hold a, a cut for Five minutes when you could be making some uh, chain mail um, I always try and leave a bit of a gap um, so anyway we coil this till about here and I think I'll probably just do a jump because you well actually I'll show you this right so here we've started getting a couple of rings there what you have to do, you just twist it and it, and try and keep it as flush to the other as possible and you get a nice smooth line going through it and it goes, it just keeps going like that, you keep twisting it you keep twisting it at that end until 
you've got the whole thing sorted. Right, so now I've coiled it all the way to this end. I'm going to get my wire cutters and just cut it right there. Put the um, wire to the side. We've got a full length now. It's probably, uh, what, 100 rings there, maybe? Never really counted how many one makes, but uh, first thing I'm going to do is the end bit, because it leaves like that point coming up, I'm going to get my pliers and just push it down a bit so I can use that ring when I uh, come to working with it. Right, that, now the next situation is this here which is the um, the link, uh, the, the, sorry, um, this is the bit that held it together when I was uh, working with it. Now there's two things I could do, I can either cut that off and just use it as uh, um, put it to the scrap and don't use it at all, or uh, if you're trying to save uh, a bit of work, what you want to do is straighten it out the best you can which might take some doing which I can't seem to do at the moment, one sec, here we go should do it, there we go and then what you want to do with your smaller pliers is where that, there's a loop there is now because I've straightened that out what you can do is if you put your small pliers through that loop there and twist it'll pull it through and then what I can do with that now is I can push this down and make probably about two more rings with it, it might not be uh, too much but it might uh, as well work and it might help me in a tight situation with rings so now I'll do the same there and push that down And there we go, right that's pushed down now so we've got a whole coil, all usable rings. What you want to do at this end is twist just to loosen it and then you should be able to pull it off and you've got one whole um, coil of rings. Then what you want to do is I always like to just stretch it a bit so you got about that, a bit like coiled spring. Uh, then just stretch it out a tiny bit when you get there what you want to do is you want to find your end point which on mine is right there and you want to get your pliers I always like to use the flat side for mine just so I can see where uh, I'm using it and then cut just keep going cut, cut those off all the way down until you're left with a uh, pile of rings Right, so now I uh, have my rings, I've now got to start creating the uh, pattern. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to get um, five split out from the group. So you want... What I usually do is you f I usually try and find four that are reasonably tight and one that's uh, more open than the others. Um, you'll see why in a minute. So what we do now is we get the first one and we close the gap so that it is um, pushed together as close as possible. Uh, this way you don't, the rings don't fall back out or uh, anything like that. So we do that. We do that to four of them. And when you get to the fifth one, get the open ring, the four rings that you've already closed and you put them like that on the ring and then you close the fifth ring so you get that. Then you want to spread them out so you got this uh, This 
this pattern that you can see here. Um, I'll just change it around so you can see. So you get this little um, four in one pattern. That's where the name comes from. Right, so now you've got this um, pattern of uh, four, um, of five, um, four and one. You want to recreate it um, a couple of times. So I, I'm going to do it. Um, I'll just do a small square for now and show you show what that looks like. So there's another. Uh, so that's two there. Make another two. Three. There's the last one, that's the fourth one there. Right, so now what I do is just put them like that, like a square, and uh, what you want to do is you want to get an open ring like that. You put it through the. Um, what what it'll look like is there'll be uh, one above the other. You want to go. If I uh, just take the camera for myself, and show you personally. Right. What you'll see is uh, with this one here that's on the top there. You can see, which is uh, on the top there. And you got the one underneath it. So what you want to do is you want the one um you want if you're threading it through you want to go through the top to sorry. If uh, yeah if you're threading it through you want to go from the top to the bottom and when you um go into the second one and linking it you want to come up through the bottom one to the top. Okay? So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. From this angle. Uh, right, so what you want to do is you want to hook it through there, and then you just close that link there. And now you've got two links together. Now do the same with these two. So, again, go in like that, and you're going back up through there, closing the ring. Now, I want to make this into a square so I can use it in uh, part of my uh, uh, chainmail link. So, oh, I've done something wrong there. Uh, yeah, right, you might hit this a couple of times. Um, if you miss a link because it's just slightly off, you'll just have to open it up and uh, put it back through. So, I'm just going to do that again. Right, got it at that time. So that's now linked. So now I've got two rows like that. 
Um, and as I say, I want to put, I want to make this into a square. So what I'm going to do is the ones that's on the top, this row at the top, uh, the ones that are the closest to the other row, you want to go through first, then drag down into the ones that are on top of the other row, and then pull, and then up through the other one there, if you can see that. I'll show you a different angle in a second, so you can see what I mean. So now you should be able to see what I mean when I do it this time. So with this link here, gonna go there, down to the bottom one, up through the bottom one again. So essentially, you're making a another um, four-in-one pattern that's already uh, linked with another. Well, that is what you're doing really. So just to finish this off quick. There we go. Right, that's my that's my little pattern there. Right, so this is what we've got: a small little uh, square of uh, chainmail. Um, then you repeat it until. You've basically got something like this is heavy. This, um, it's a project I'm working on at the moment, which is my home uh, homework. Um, I'm sure people say something about me pronouncing that wrong. Um, if, if I pronounced it wrong, I can never remember how to pronounce that. Um, yeah, that that one that you just saw is going to be um, in my project. Uh, that's going to be with my uh, the R and R group, the Rajesh um, This is that's what really we're waiting for for me to complete this armor, um, and then we can do the video. We've got some other costume props to do, um, and then we can actually get it done. We've got a, personally, we, I um, I think I've talked to some of the other members in the group and. Some of the jokes um, I think are pretty good in it, um, but obviously I'm not uh, the people who are watching it, I'm the person who's making it, so obviously I'm going to have a bit of a biased view, so don't forget to keep checking the um, Righteous Randomers for any uh, updated videos, um, obviously keep checking my channel. Um, now, I'll show you something else that I've been making with Chainmail again. Um, this one is... I believe it's not really technically right. It was never used, made, or um, a good, really, design for chainmail in uh, medieval. They tend to use mittens if uh, the mitten gauntlets of chainmail, if you know what they look like. And also, chainmail, usually on the gloves, was sewn onto a fabric that was like a glove underneath. But I've come up with a bit of a design that works like a glove, quite literally. So they can see it's got the uh, underside of it, the back. It's fully flexible. I can grasp stuff. Um, pretty painful to hit. Um, it's, this one's not finished. I'm thinking of extending it down to here so it looks like it's got a bit of a extra bit to it because at the moment it just doesn't feel finished if you know what I mean. Um, apart from that I think that's uh, an idea of mine. You can try it if you uh, want basically what it is. It's a, line, um, a, a square all the way around uh, the fun piece is just a cylinder with uh, a cylinder of uh, chainmail, with one link, well, a couple of links at the top to link it all together. Uh, same with the other fingers. You can see it's a bit messed up there because, well, really, I didn't know what or how uh, the best way to link it was. 
Right, um, and to finish it off, I'd just like to show this again. This is my coif. Um, I know that's probably. I know it's another thing that I probably don't know how to pronounce the name of. Um, but, yep, this is my other piece of chainmail. It's. I think this is one of my favourites at the moment, mainly because it's actually complete. Um, it's got a whole neck piece. Um, apart from, I might be putting a ventail on it um, to cover the mouth. Um, I might put that on eventually. Uh, but I'll just show you how this works. Right. Ugh. Apart from it messing up your hair. Uh, basically, it all works around one ring that you sort out at the start which is that one there and what you do is um, there's really there's about three parts to the design of this there's the top which is this whole piece here there's the center which is there, the bit with the gap in the centre, and then there's the the neck protection. Right, so if we start with the top, right, with the top, what what happens is it has to be um, in line with the sort of a shape of your head, which is a dome, really. Um, so what happens is from that one ring, we do something that's called an expanding weave, which is really I think it's every um, three circles that you do round you add an extra ring on every second link so I can't really, it's difficult to explain without showing but um, it's basically what it says uh, it's called an expanding weave because you're expanding it every uh, one or two um, different rows that you build until you've got this sort of uh, pattern uh, which is a circular link going all the way around and then after that you do a simple um, the, it's the back to the normal 4-in-1 um, and it's all there, goes around um, that was quite tricky because I didn't know how many I had to count roughly how many I needed to um, link on on the uh, on, for the gap and so really it's, it's a guessing game when you're doing that you've got to try and work out make sure it looks right and if it looks right then it's probably is more or less right probably one or two off or something um, then you've got the bottom which is the same pattern you're still going down with the four in four in one um, and I guess really at the bottom you could do an expanding weave if you wanted to make it cover a bit more down on the chest and the top of the shoulders and back maybe behind the uh, on the back a bit. Apart from that, though, uh, you don't really need to do much more. Uh, there are videos I've found. There is one video on YouTube about the um, coif, um, which you can find. It's just type in how to make a coif on YouTube search, and um, it'll be one of the first videos. Um, if you've got any questions, obviously just put it in the uh, comments or um, message my channel uh, don't forget to subscribe and like this video oh yeah and li like this video um, and there'll be more videos from me coming up soon the uh, gaming guy um, so that's goodbye from me Matt and uh, I'll see you soon